The previous video of the photoelectric effect playlist discussed the puzzling nature of the photoelectric effect and the challenges it posed to the wave theory of light. Here, we'll explore Albert Einstein's radical solution to this puzzle, the photon model of light, and discuss how it successfully explains experimental observations. We'll first recap these observations, after which I'll introduce Einstein's photon model of light. We'll then look at how the photon model provides a simple and beautiful explanation of the observations. Let's remind ourselves of the summary of observations we noted after exploring the photoelectric effect simulation. You may want to pause the video to read over the observations. Recall that these observations, specifically numbers 1, 3 and 4, were puzzling to physicists since they clash with what the wave theory of light predicts. To recap, the expectations of wave theory are as shown, with crosses next to numbers 1, 3 and 4, which are at odds with observations. Again, please pause the video to have a read if needed. In 1905, Einstein proposed a revolutionary hypothesis to explain the experimental data, for which he won a Nobel Prize in 1921. He suggested that light, rather than being a wave, consists of discrete chunks or packets of energy, now called photons. In other words, photons are particle-like entities carrying discrete amounts of energy. The FET simulation that we're seeing here should help you form a mental model of radiation being comprised of photons. Interestingly, Einstein's idea was inspired by Max Planck's work on black body radiation, in which Planck used the idea of energy existing in discrete chunks. The history of the photoelectric effect and the development of physics in the early 20th century is fascinating. I highly recommend the video on this by Kathy Loves Physics and History if you'd like to learn more. In the photon model of radiation, a photon carries energy given by the formula E equals HF. E stands for the energy of the photon, H is Planck's constant, and F is the frequency of the light. Planck's constant is a fundamental constant of nature, and has the value 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 joule seconds. We'll see in a follow-up video on the stopping potential how it's possible to measure this. A photon is known as a quantum of electromagnetic radiation. The plural form of the word quantum is quanta. An important thing to note, if there's just a single photon, then the energy of the photon is given by E equals HF. What if the radiation consists of two photons? Well, each photon has an energy of HF, so the total energy is 2 HF. Three photons, a total energy of 3 HF, and so on. Assuming we're talking about monochromatic light, light of a single frequency, F, is it possible for the light to have an energy of, say, 1.5 HF or 2.5 HF? No, because we can only talk about whole numbers of photons, not a half or some other fraction of a photon. And so the total energy can only be an integer multiple of HF. This is what's meant by the phrase that light consists of discrete chunks or packets of energy. The discretization of energy is in stark contrast with the wave theory of light, in which the light energy is a continuous quantity. Any amount is possible. Another word for the discretization of energy is quantization. So, how does the photon model solve the photoelectric effect puzzle? Let's consider each of the four observations in turn. Why does each metal require a specific threshold frequency? a minimum frequency in order for photoemission to occur. There is a minimum energy that electrons must gain if they are to escape a metal surface. This minimum energy is known as the work function and varies from metal to metal. As shown, we use the Greek letter phi to denote the work function. An electron can gain this minimum energy by absorbing a single photon. Thus, a single photon's energy, HF, must be at least equal to the work function for emission to occur. If we replace the inequality with equality, we can get an expression for the threshold frequency, as shown. The subscript min is short for minimum. In the previous video of the playlist, 
we saw that the threshold frequencies of copper and sodium were 1.1 times 10 to the 15 and 5.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Below these frequencies, we observed that photoemission didn't occur, irrespective of the intensity and duration of the radiation. Why is that? Recall from the previous video that an increase in intensity simply means more light energy arriving per second onto a metal plate. In the photon model, increasing intensity thus implies proportionally more photons arriving per second. So you might think that if there are more photons arriving, then surely there's more energy available for electrons to gain and eventually escape the metal. A key point to note is that electrons and photons interact in a one-to-one -one manner. An electron can only absorb a single photon. So even if there are 10 times as many photons arriving per second than before, if the frequency is below the threshold, each photon has too little energy to transfer to an electron to allow it to escape. Let's now turn our attention to the second observation. While wave theory can account for this, the photon model offers a very simple explanation. Let's assume the light's frequency is at or above the threshold. As mentioned previously, increasing intensity results in proportionally more photons arriving per second onto the metal surface. For instance, doubling intensity means twice as many photons arriving per second. This would result in twice as many electrons absorbing incoming photons, and thus a doubling in the number of electrons being liberated. In other words, the number of photoelectrons is proportional to the intensity of the light. On to observation number three. Earlier, we discussed the concept of a metal's work function the minimum energy required for an electron to escape the metal surface. But this is simply the minimum. While the work function may be enough to eject one electron, another may require more energy. Indeed, even above the threshold frequency, some electrons may need more energy to escape than can be provided by a single photon. This implies that the electrons which do escape, the photoelectrons, emerge with a range of kinetic energies, depending on how much of the photon's energy was needed to escape the metal. We can thus form an equation for the maximum possible kinetic energy, as shown. Rearranging, this is given by HF minus the work function. As you can see, for a fixed metal and thus a constant work function, the maximum kinetic energy increases with an increase in frequency. Changing the intensity of the radiation has no effect on it though. The maximum kinetic energy doesn't depend on the number of photons arriving per second. Again, while wave theory is incapable of explaining this observation, Einstein's photon model provides a simple and elegant explanation. The key to understanding the last observation within the photon model is as follows. As long as there is some light incident on the metal, i.e. the light has a non-zero intensity, photons will strike the surface and transfer their energy immediately to electrons. Assuming we're above the threshold frequency, this results in electrons being ejected without any time lag or delay. It's because energy is carried in discrete chunks or packets, photons, that the absorption of energy leads to immediate emission. In contrast, light waves would transfer energy to electrons gradually and continuously, and so electrons wouldn't immediately gain enough energy to escape. To sum up, Einstein's model beautifully explains the photoelectric effect via the concept of photons, discrete packets of light energy, where the energy of a photon is given by Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency of the radiation. An electron at a metal surface requires a minimum energy to escape, known as the work function. This implies a minimum or threshold frequency, which is needed for the light to induce photoemission. Electrons and photons interact in a one-to-one -one manner. An electron can only absorb a single photon. Thus, below the threshold frequency, photoemission cannot occur, irrespective of the intensity or duration of the radiation. Photoelectrons emerge with a range of kinetic energies, but with an upper limit or maximum. 
This maximum increases with frequency, but doesn't depend on intensity. And finally, the discrete nature of photons explains why photoemission occurs without a time delay. I'd love to hear from you if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover. Simply leave a comment below. If this video was helpful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Forest Learn channel and tap the notification bell to all notifications so you don't miss out. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I hope to discuss more physics with you soon.